Welcome back to bazookatraining.com here in the sparring section today. It's pressure fighting. One of my favorite ways of fighting is closing that distance and pressuring your opponent against the ropes. Okay, so let's get into some of the concepts of pressure fighting. So the first thing we have to understand is our positioning. You know, my posture. Right away, if I'm pressure fighting, okay, I don't want to be so tall, okay? So right away, I, need, I like to lower my base because I want to get inside. By standing tall, it's a lot harder to go in and it's more dangerous for me to come in as well, okay? So the first thing, just to warm up pressure fighting. With good pressure fighting comes good, confident defense, okay? Now, when you're defending, I always like to make sure we do the jab, cross, hook, the basic punches that we need to know in those sequences. So, ideally, you can, one, use a wedge. I can catch here, come forward, okay? One, two, three, and staying in the ground. The big habit people have a lot is after the three punches, they have to want to reset. Not with pressure fighting, you stay in there. So, three punches, three, I take a step forward. Now, when I move forward, usually my opponent moves backwards slightly. They come again, one, two, three, I slide forward. So the key is to move them back. I don't want to necessarily crash the distance, but I'm stepping in slowly. Now, I'm going to give you the timing when to step forward. Now, from here, when we're not throwing anything, okay, first thing I could do is mix in a feint. And a feint could do a few things. A feint will either shell Matt up or it'll move him back. Boom. And then I come forward. See how I close my distance, right, off of the feint. Matt throws. Now, one, two, three. I step forward. He moved back. So I'm moving after his punches, okay. Or with a feint, he moves back. Now, once you become more intermediate advanced, what I like to do is I like to kind of pressure and close the hands down before they even come out. So if Matt throws a jab right here, I block this, but what do I know that's coming to cross? So right away, I match the hand. He's going to go with a hook. Boom, I can stop here. Now look, I'm inside here. I've pressured him backwards, okay? So again, quick little recap. Matt throws his punches, I stay long, I move forward here. I got him backwards, okay? Then he throws his punches, I block, I come here. I keep moving forward with a nice high guard, okay? Or he punches again, I reach and I crash his hands, put them in here, and I got my options to come in, okay? That is the key to start, okay? So we're gonna get these guys warming up with this concept right now. One person punching, okay? And the other person coming forward, okay? See, right now, Matt's moving back a bit, but what happens now is Diego also is a pressure fighter, so Matt needs to bully a little bit. So now you see him not stepping backwards, but when he gets the opportunity, see how he clinches in. Now, when someone continually pushes, okay, Matt just needs to use a push-off now a little bit more. Good. And then keep walking forward. So you notice after that push-off, Matt closes the distance again. So just another strategy. Now, this is Diego being a good pressure fighter, okay. Now, I want Diego to be more of a movement fighter, okay. So now, this is another option. You see Diego hitting, moving, staying very long. Now, this is where Matt's pressure fighting has to be used even more, okay. Now, the first style when Diego was staying head to head, you know, you might get another bull where you're going to have to fight another pressure fighter. That's different tactics, okay? But here, you see Matt closing distance safely, blocking the punches, using the guard to come in. Now, some of the biggest mistakes people make in this type of closing distance is they'll throw punches from the outside. But the problem with that is Diego's moving his feet and he can counter. So I like to make sure you move your feet first, get them to the ropes, then throw your punches. If there's still space between your opponent and the ropes in the cage, okay, they could be drawing you in and trying to catch you. Move them back with your defense, get them close, and then at that point, okay, you get to be able to push them off and do something, okay? We're gonna go again now with Diego boxing now. With the pressure fighting, I want to add counters, okay? So Matt's gonna stay in the pocket and then look for counters. Now, as a beginner, you start very simple, okay? So we'll do it quick. Diego, just start with a lead hook, okay? And we do this, boom, Matt stays forward. Pressure him back, hit push him back. If Diego doesn't want to push back, use your shell, push them back, okay? Okay, we can do rear hook. Catch, shoot, press forward. Yes. 
Okay, then we can do a jab cross, okay? Block, block, forward, pressure, just keep moving them backwards, yes. So you can see now we're using pressure. Now you can also do boxing to low kick. So catch, you know, counter with punches versus kicks. All pressure fighting, push them back, okay? Now, once again, I like that pressure. If I'm coaching Matt here, I would say after the kick, okay, or some punches, give me a shield bump, boom, and then attack again. So Diego punches, Matt counters, pushes him off, attacks, and now he's backing up for the video just for space, but ideally he's against the ropes of the cage, and now he can't do anything, okay? Boom, see? So adding this type of pressure and calculated movement. Get them moving backwards, all right? So good blocking, good forward pressure, not moving backwards, and the key is not resetting. Don't kick and then pop up again. That invites your opponent to throw. All right. Now, say Diego doesn't throw as much and Matt wants to move him back. Matt can use these occupying spaces punches to stay busy, right? He's staying busy with volume because a lot of people don't want to, right? Look, he's staying busy with the volume, long punches. It's shelling up Diego and allowing Matt to go forward. But when Matt's doing this, he's got to be prepared. Diego's going to throw a counter. So he throws the counter, Matt counters back. So Matt's pressuring with volume, assessing punches. Diego tries to counter, Matt counters the counter, keeps pushing him back, okay? So those are all important concepts. Strong defense, countering, shield bump push off attacking, okay? Occupying space to keep them moving, fainting to create space changes, all allows you to pressure fight really, really well, okay? Going to the body, very effective as well. Now, I'm gonna give one last little point here and a little trick to pressure fighting, okay? And time over here. Now, if you're fighting someone with very good movement, okay, it's very important that we understand the tracking aspect of it, okay? So you don't wanna get caught all the time moving too forward where your opponent can dance. So don't rush too fast. Now, we're gonna start from this end of the screen. Matt's gonna come here. Now, when I really wanna pressure someone, if I move in the straight line fast, it's easy for Matt to circle around. So I come in here, it's easy for him to circle around. Right? So I avoid that by one, maybe being slower, right? And now I can cut off. See what I did? Is I use that open stance here, neutral stance to help. So if I'm more calculated, he moves, I can stay in front. I go forward, he moves. See? I'm more here with more of a shuffle stance than staying bladed and very fast forward, okay? Now the last tip, if I wanna move my opponent back in a straight line, I just told you pushing them in a straight line is not gonna help. So what I do is a little zigzag pattern. If I move this way on mat, okay, on a 45, okay, and then I cut this way, and then I keep cutting this way, I cut him using the Z step, okay? So watch from this angle. I come here and I track him using this little Z pattern. Now, the Z pattern is gonna walk him back in a straight line, okay? So I come here, usually when I go here, Matt goes this way. I come here, he circles the other way, okay? And then we go this way and I can track him, now he's against the ropes, and then I can finish off pressure, staying here, boom, clinching, okay? Staying here. Now once you get your opponent here, you stay here. Don't reset, let them out. You worked so hard and intelligently to get them back there, do the work while you're there. And when you're there, then you can play your lateral tracking game, right? We talked about that recently. Lateral tracking once they're against the ropes. So this is where everything gets together, okay? Intelligent pressure fighting, using good hand defense, pressure, shield bumping, angling, zigzag footworks, okay? There's a lot more to it. We'll get more detailed as the channel progresses, all right? Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We'll see you next time here at bazookatraining.com.